In linguistics, the Indo-European oblaut pronounced is a system of apophony regular vowel variations in the Proto-Indo-European language. All modern Indo-European languages have inherited the feature, though its prevalence and productivity strongly varies. An example of oblaut in English is the strong verb sing, sang, sung and its related noun song, a paradigm inherited directly from the Proto-Indo-European stage of the language. History of the concept The term oblaut from German ab in the sense down, reducing, gradated, plus laut, sound, thus literally meaning sound gradation, was coined in the early 19th century by linguist Jacob Grimm. However, the phenomenon of the Indo-European oblaut itself was first recorded more than 2,000 years earlier by the Sanskrit grammarians and was codified by Panini in his Ashtadayi, where the terms guna and verdi were used to describe the phenomena now known respectively as the full grade and lengthened grade. In the context of European languages, the phenomenon was first described in the early 18th century by the Dutch linguist Lambert ten Kate, in his book Gemeenschap tussen de Gotische Spreek en de Nederdeutsch, Commonality between the Gothic language and Low German Dutch, 1710. Topic. Overview of Proto-Indo-European Since oblaut was a regular system in Proto-Indo-European but survives only as irregular or partially regular variations in the recorded languages, any explanation of oblaut has to begin with an overview of pi. Proto-Indo-European is the hypothetical parent language from which most of the modern and ancient European languages evolved. By comparing the recorded forms from pi's daughter languages, linguists can infer the forms of the parent language. However, it is not possible to be certain how the reconstructed forms were pronounced, and the reconstructions are to be understood as an encoding of the deduced phonemes, rather than a reliable indication of the actual pronunciations. Established convention marks all pi forms with an asterisk to indicate that they are hypothetical. For more details on these reconstructions, see Proto-Indo-European language, laryngeal theory and comparative method. Topic. Oblaut and vowel gradation Vowel gradation is any vowel difference between two related words such as photograph and photography or two forms of the same word such as man and men. The difference need not be indicated in the spelling. There are many kinds of vowel gradation in English and other languages, which are discussed generally in the article Apophony. Some involve a variation in vowel length, others in vowel coloring qualitative gradation, man, men, and others the complete disappearance of a vowel reduction to zero, could not couldn't. For the study of European languages, one of the most important instances of vowel gradation is the Indo-European oblaut, remnants of which can be seen in the English verbs ride, rode, ridden, or fly, flew, flown. For simply learning English grammar, it is enough to note that these verbs are irregular, but understanding why they have unusual forms that seem irregular and indeed why they are actually perfectly regular within their own terms requires an understanding of the grammar of the reconstructed proto-language, where they were regular. Oblaut is the oldest and most extensive single source of vowel gradation in the Indo-European languages and must be distinguished clearly from other forms of gradation, which developed later, such as Germanic umlaut man, men, goose, geese, long, length or the results of modern English word stress patterns man, woman, photograph, photography. Confusingly, in some contexts, the terms oblaut, vowel gradation, apophony, and vowel alternation are used synonymously, especially in synchronic comparisons, but historical linguists prefer to keep oblaut for the specific Indo-European phenomenon, which is the meaning intended by the linguists who first coined the word. Topic. Oblaut grades In Proto-Indo-European, the basic, inherent vowel of most syllables was a short e. Oblaut is the name of the process whereby this short e changed, becoming short o, long e, long o or sometimes disappearing entirely to leave no vowel at all. Thus, oblaut turned short e into the following sounds. If a syllable had a short e, it is said to be in the e grade or full grade. When it had no vowel, it is said to be in the zero grade. Syllables with long vowels are said to be in lengthened grade. When the E grade or the O grade is referred to, the short vowel forms are meant. 
A classic example of the five grades of oblaut in a single root is provided by the different case forms of two closely related Greek words. In the following table, an acute accent marks the syllable carrying the word stress, a macron marks long vowels and the syllable in bold is the one illustrating the different vowel gradations. In this unusually neat example, the following can be seen A switch to the zero grade when the word stress moves to the following syllable. A switch to the O grade when the word stress moves to the preceding syllable. A lengthening of the vowel when the syllable is in word final position, as with most reconstructions, however, scholars differ about the details of this example. One way to think of this system is that Proto-Indo-European originally had only one vowel, short e, and over time, it changed according to phonetic context, so the language started to develop a more complex vowel system. Thus, it has often been speculated that an original E grade underwent two changes in some phonetic environments, under certain circumstances, it changed to O, the o grade, and in others, it disappeared entirely the zero grade. However, that is not certain, the phonetic conditions that controlled oblaut have never been determined, and the position of the word stress may not have been a key factor at all. There are many counterexamples to the proposed rules. Asterisk dewos and its nominative plural asterisk dewos show pretonic and posttonic e grade, respectively, and asterisk wkos has an accented zero grade. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Lengthened grades. Many examples of lengthened grades, including those listed above, are not directly conditioned by oblaut. Instead, they are a result of sound changes like Zemmerani's law and Stang's law, which caused compensatory lengthening of originally short vowels. In the examples above, Zemmerani's law affected the older sequences asterisk ph 2 trs and asterisk n p 2 tor s, changing them to asterisk ph 2 tr and asterisk n p 2 tor. Thus, these forms were originally in the regular, unlengthened e grade and o grade. Such lengthened vowels were, however, later grammaticalized and spread to other words in which the change did not occur. Nevertheless, there are examples of true lengthened grades, in which short e alternates with long e. Examples are the verbs with narten, inflection, and nouns like asterisk me n, s, moon, genitive asterisk me n, s o s. Alternations of this type were rare, however, and the e tilde o tilde alternation was the most common by far. The long O grade was rarer still and may not have actually been a part of the oblaut system at all. Topic. Zero grade The zero grade of oblaut may appear difficult for speakers of English. However, there are several languages who show fricatives and even plosives in syllable nuclei. In the case of asterisk ph2 trays, which may already have been pronounced something like trays, it is not difficult to imagine it as a contraction of an older asterisk ph2 teres, pronounced perhaps teres, as this combination of consonants and vowels would be possible in English as well. In other cases, however, the absence of a vowel strikes the speaker of a modern Western European language as unpronounceable. To understand, one must be aware that there were a number of sounds that were consonants in principle but could operate in ways analogous to vowels, the four syllabic sonorants, the three laryngeals and the two semi-vowels. The syllabic sonorants are m, n, r and l, which could be consonants much as they are in English, but they could also be held on as continuants and carry a full syllable stress and then are transcribed with a small circle beneath them. The laryngeals could be pronounced as consonants, in which case they were probably variations on the H sound and so normally transcribed as H1, H2 and H3. However, they could also carry a syllable stress, in which case they were more like vowels. Thus, some linguists prefer to transcribe them, 1, 2 and 3. The vocalic pronunciation may have originally involved the consonantal sounds with a very slight schwa before and or after the consonant. In pre-vocalic positions, the phonemes U and I were semi-vowels, probably pronounced like English W and Y, but they could also become pure vowels when the following oblaut vowel reduced to zero. When U and I came in post-vocalic positions, the result was a diphthong. Oblaut is nevertheless regular and looks like this. Thus, any of these could replace the oblaut vowel when it was reduced to the zero grade. The pattern CVRC, for example, asterisk B erg could become CRC, asterisk BR, G. However, not every pi syllable was capable of forming a zero grade, some consonant structures inhibited it in particular cases, or completely. 
Thus, for example, although the preterite plural of a Germanic strong verb see below is derived from the zero grade, classes 4 and 5 have instead vowels representing the lengthened e grade, as the stems of these verbs could not have sustained a zero grade in this position. Zero grade is said to be from pre pi syncope in unaccented syllables, but in some cases the lack of accent does not cause zero grade, asterisk dewo, nominative plural asterisk s. God. There does not seem to be a rule governing the unaccented syllables that take zero grade and the ones that take stronger grades. Nowadays, a few Indo Europeanists reject the syncope hypothesis and instead understand early pi as a polysynthetic and templatic type language with discontinuous consonant roots and vowel transfixes. A grade It is still a matter of debate whether pi had an original of vowel at all. In later pi, the disappearance of the laryngeal H2 could leave an a coloring and this may explain all occurrences of a in later pi. However, some argue controversially that the E grade could sometimes be replaced by an A grade without the influence of a laryngeal, which might help to explain the vowels in class 6 Germanic verbs, for example. Topic. Subsequent development Although pi had only this one, basically regular, oblaut sequence, the development in the daughter languages is frequently far more complicated, and few reflect the original system as neatly as Greek. Various factors, such as vowel harmony, assimilation with nasals, or the effect of the presence of laryngeals in the Indo-European roots as well as their subsequent loss in most daughter languages, mean that a language may have several different vowels representing a single vowel in the parent language. In particular, the zero grade was often subject to modification from changes in the pronunciation of syllabic sonorants. For example, in Germanic, syllabic sonorants acquired an epithetic U, thus converting the original zero grade to a new U grade in many words. Thus, while oblaut survives in some form in all Indo-European languages, it became progressively less systematic over time. Oblaut explains vowel differences between related words of the same language. For example, English strike and stroke both come from the same IE root asterisk strake. The former comes from the E grade, the latter from the O grade. German Berg hill and Berg castle both come from the root asterisk B erg, which presumably meant high. The former comes from the E grade, the latter from the zero grade. Zero grade followed by R becomes er in Germanic. Oblaut also explains vowel differences between cognates in different languages. English tooth comes from Germanic asterisk tan s e.g. Old English to, Old High German zand, genitive asterisk tund is Gothic tunis, but also ia tundi thornbush, literally horse tooth. This form is related to Latin dens, dentis and Greek otis, odontos with the same meaning, and is reflected in the English words dentist and orthodontic. One reconstructed i.e. form is asterisk don'ts, genitive asterisk dn, tes. The consonant differences can be explained by regular sound shifts in primitive Germanic but not the vowel differences, by the regular laws of sound changes. Germanica can originate from pi o, but unusually goes back to a syllabic n. The explanation is that the Germanic and Greek nominative forms developed from the o grade, the Latin word and the Germanic genitive from the zero grade in which syllabic n developed into n much in the same way as it became un in Germanic. Going a step further back, some scholars reconstruct asterisk h1 don'ts, from the zero grade of the root asterisk h1 ed to eat and the participle ont and explain it as the eating one. English foot comes from the lengthened o grade of asterisk ped. Greek poos, podos and Latin pays, pedis compare English octopus and pedestrian, come from the short o grade and the e grade respectively. For the English-speaking non-specialist, a good reference work for quick information on i.e. roots, including the difference of oblaut grade behind related lexemes, is Calvert Watkins, The American Heritage Dictionary of Indo-European Roots, 2nd edition, Boston and New York 2000. Note that in discussions of lexis, Indo-European roots are normally cited in the e grade, without any inflections. Topic grammatical function in pi, there were already oblaut differences within the paradigms of verbs and nouns. These were not the main markers of grammatical form, since the inflection system served this purpose, but they must have been significant secondary markers. An example of oblaut in the paradigm of the noun in pi can be found in asterisk paradis, from which the English words ford and via Latin port are derived both via the zero grade stem asterisk pr, t. An example in a verb is asterisk beyd to wait cf. Bide. 
In the daughter languages, these came to be important markers of grammatical distinctions. The vowel change in the Germanic strong verb, for example, is the direct descendant of that seen in the Indo-European verb paradigm. Examples in modern English are the following, it was in this context of Germanic verbs that oblaut was first described, and this is still what most people primarily associate with the phenomenon. A fuller description of oblaut operating in English, German and Dutch verbs and of the historical factors governing these can be found at the article Germanic strong verb. The same phenomenon is displayed in the verb tables of Latin, Ancient Greek and Sanskrit. Examples of oblaut as a grammatical marker in Latin are the vowel changes in the perfect stem of verbs. Oblaut can often explain apparently random irregularities. For example, the verb to be in Latin has the forms est he is, and sunt they are. The equivalent forms in German are very similar, east and sind. The same forms are present in Slavic languages, est and sut. The difference between singular and plural in these languages is easily explained, the pi root is asterisk h1s. In the singular, the stem is stressed, so it remains in the e grade, and it takes the inflection t. In the plural, however, the inflection nt was stressed, causing the stem to reduce to the zero grade, asterisk h1s nt asterisk h1s nt. See main article, Indo-European copula. Some of the morphological functions of the various grades are as follows, E grade, present tense of thematic verbs, root stress. Present singular of athematic verbs, root stress. Accusative and vocative singular, nominative, accusative and vocative dual, nominative plural of nouns, O grade, verbal nouns stem stressed masculine action nouns Greek gonos offspring, Sanskrit janas creature, person, Greek trakos circular course. Asterisk act of running, ending stressed feminine, originally collective, action nouns Greek gon offspring, Sanskrit jan birth, ending stressed masculine agent nouns Greek trakos wheel asterisk runner, nominative, vocative and accusative singular of certain nouns acrostatic root nouns such as dom, plural domes house, proterokinetic neuter nouns such as asterisk wooder, water or doru tree. Present tense of causative verbs, stem not root stress. Perfect singular tense, zero grade, present dual and plural tense of athematic verbs, ending stress. Perfect dual and plural tense, ending stress. Past participles, ending stress. Some verbs in the aorist, the Greek thematic, second aorist. Oblique singular, dual, plural, accusative plural of nouns, lengthened grade, nominative singular of many nouns. Present singular of certain athematic verbs, so-called Martin stem verbs. Some verbs in the aorist. Some derived verbal nouns so-called proto-vrddhi, many examples of lengthened grade roots in the daughter languages are actually caused by the effect of laryngeals and of Zemmerani's law and Stang's law, which operated within Indo-European times. Topic see also topic References Beeks, Robert S. P. 1995. Comparative Indo-European Linguistics, An Introduction. Amsterdam, John Benjamins. ISBN 90-272-2150-2, Europe, ISBN 1-55619-504-4, U.S. Coetzum, Franz Van 1993. Oblaut and Reduplication in the Germanic Verb equals Indogermanisch Bibliothek, Vol. 3. Heidelberg, Winter Verlag. ISBN 3-8253-4267-0. Kurilovich, Jersey, Manfred Meyerhofer 1968-1969. Indogermanisch Grammatik. Heidelberg, Winter Verlag. ISBN 3-533-03487-9. Meyer Brugger, Michael 2002. Indogermanisch Sprachwissenschaft, de Gruder. ISBN 3-11-017243-7. Zemerenyi, Oswald J. L. Introduction to Indo-European Linguistics. Clarendon, Oxford University Press. ISBN 0-19-824015-5. Watkins, Calvert 2000. The American Heritage Dictionary of Indo-European Roots 2nd ed. Boston and New York, Houghton Mifflin. ISBN 0-618-08250-6.